These are the stories. There is a foundation out there that helps you get back into it. Of organizations making a difference. What really limits our ability to do something is people's imagination. And empowering others across Canada. When I get into that sledge, I'm free, man. I'm playing hockey. It's a great organization and it's worth supporting. In our community. I'd like to welcome you today to my woodworking shop. This is my happy place, I guess. I love the the smells, the the touch, the feel. I've always had an affinity with it, I guess. My name is George Woodworth. I'm the Vice President of Ability New Brunswick, and I live here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Each of the machines that you see here have been retrofitted to a certain degree, some more than others, so that I can operate them as a quadriplegic independently. 10 years ago, a hunting accident left George with quadriplegia. He is one of 73,000 people in New Brunswick who lives with a mobility disability. When the pandemic struck, the provincial organization that serves them went into high gear to help. I'm Haley Flero. I'm the executive director of Ability New Brunswick. When the state of emergency was announced, uh, the first directive we gave to our staff was to start calling every one of our service participants. And, you know, within a period of a week and a half, we made over 450 calls with additional individuals calling us that may not be registered with us, that needed someone to talk to for reassurance, to help them navigate the information, to send them information, those that didn't have internet access. So that was the immediate directive we gave to staff. One of those clients, Noor Ogli, a Syrian woman in St. John who lives with Charcot-Marie tooth disease, found COVID made a tough situation a lot more challenging. When coronavirus happened, I had surgeries. Uh, on November 26, uh, the doctor told me that he would be in cast for six weeks. I couldn't move or sleep on my other side for five months. Imagine if you can't get around, like sleep on the other side, imagine it. It was so hard for me. To help people like Noor and George, Ability and B knew it had to be nimble to get creative with its programs and services. The good news, it was already in great shape to respond quickly. We sat down and said, how can we ensure that we deliver our services even better and even more creatively? And that's what we did. We immediately put someone in an essential service position to take all our toll-free number, phone calls and emails and direct them out to staff cell phones. We had a technology plan where we all had iPads and laptops and cell phones and we were able to transition home but still provide phone, internet service to people and with precautions do curbside visits. In Sackville, New Brunswick, Nolan Dobbin is an outgoing 19-year-old who lives with Williams Syndrome. The hardest part of COVID for Nolan, staying at home. Hi, my name is Nolan Dobbin. I am 18 years old. I live in Sackville, New Brunswick. This is my sister Megan, my mom and dad, and my best friend who is a dog named Louie, and he is not all that smart. I'm a pretty social guy. I like to go to high school hockey games at the rink and tackle, go to Mount A football field, and I also clean the church. During coronavirus, I was missing my friends at Smile and my friends at Best Buddies. And those are two different programs that I participate in. And what I like about all the different things I do around Sackville is just being able to like be me. From social isolation to home care and access to fresh food, the pandemic affected every Ability NB client. The pandemic added a lot of new challenges to the usual roadblocks people who live with mobility disabilities face. People had less support they could count on. They had to social distance, stay at home. So we started to take a look at some of our existing programs and how we could tweak them. While each client's situation is unique, they have something very important in common the support and care of an organization that responded in record time with creativity and heart to a situation no one saw coming. This is their story, a story of grit. 
Many people with mobility disabilities rely on personal support workers, and this was one of the biggest challenges during COVID. Elizabeth Murphy, Ability NB's Director of Development, explains. One huge concern from folks was around their usual support systems, like neighbors that might typically give them a lift to the grocery store. All of a sudden, they're not allowed to interact with them. They're not allowed to be close. So people were looking to us for information on, you know, what can we do to help? Because all of a sudden, you know, that that's one access to, to groceries, for example, that, that they don't have anymore. For George Woodworth, who was recovering from decompression surgery at home in Fredericton when the province went into lockdown, protecting himself was imperative. When COVID hit, I did feel very vulnerable uh, because of my compromised uh, immune system and my diaphragm is partially paralyzed, so I already have respiratory issues. But on the other hand, I was lucky and had a very dedicated care team who, when they came in, you know, going through the routine of washing, washing your hands, uh, using hand sanitizer often, I guess you deal with, the, deal with it the best you can. One of the biggest challenges after COVID hit was dealing with the lack of medical outpatient care, specifically physio and OT through the Stan Cassidy Center. It was basically shut down and I, so I went from, you know, having, having regular physio appointments to having no physio appointments and being left feeling stranded and trying to maximize the amount of return that, that you're going to get in the window that, that you can work with, that's, that's a huge mental stress because it's going to change the outcome for the rest of your life. While George was housebound, he had more time to spend on interests he'd never really pursued before, but he needed the right equipment. When the pandemic first hit, Ability New Brunswick was really proactive in reaching out to our clients, me being one of them, and seeing how they could assist in daily living and make things a little easier. I was able to get a Kensington trackball mouse through the United Way Compassion Fund, so the, that mouse really reduced and made my life a lot less painful. Getting your medical supplies and getting your uh, your groceries was a really big concern for our people because you're used to, you know, relying on rides or, you know, you're not you're not able to buy food in bulk and and stock up because you can't afford it because your your disability supports don't give you that much funding per month. We do have a vehicle retrofit program that gives folks part funding in order to upgrade your vehicle to make it accessible, but that's, you know, that's not for everyone. That's a vehicle retrofitting is an extremely expensive endeavor, so a lot of folks just, you know, it's difficult to get that much funding. If it wasn't for everybody that helped us with the crowdfunding in so many ways, the, the raffles, the concerts, the Burpee family who graciously let me purchase their, their father's vehicle after he passed away, I, I wouldn't have experienced the independence of being able to drive from point A to point B. The pandemic has provided a few silver linings in the dark cloud that hovers over us. Um, my family, like many others, I'm sure, have actually become closer and have spent more time together. I call my mom often and my wife and I talk on the phone every day. My son Danny's 24. We've spent quite a bit of time in the, in the woodworking shop and he's helped me with a couple orders. If you're having a bad day, there's always someone worse off and and so you're just reminded to be thankful of every little bit of ability and blessings that life has deemed to shower upon you, I guess. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. 
My name is Maggie McGraw and I'm Nora's Transition Planner with Ability New Brunswick. My name is Nora Oakley and I live in San Juan, New Brunswick. Right before COVID-19, Nora had a surgery that didn't go as planned, so it kind of took her back in a lot of her mobility. Nora was no longer able to transfer herself on her own or do like lifts, and so she had to have a brother like picking her up and putting her into her bed or the chair, or the bathroom. Ability and B was able to help. We were able to get her, you know, some cabinets in the bathroom so she could do a little bit more on her own, go to the bathroom on her own and reach some of her things on her own. She definitely has lost some of that mobility that she used to have in this all kind of panned out around the time of COVID-19. So there was a lot of additional stressors on top of just the pandemic, which is really hard and something that you see with a lot of different clients that we've worked with too. With Noor unable to work or leave the house, it was really hard on her whole family. Even getting groceries was a challenge. They weren't the only ones struggling. Food insecurity was one of the biggest challenges people with mobility disabilities faced during the pandemic. Elizabeth on how Ability NB responded. For us, it was really important to make sure that people were fed. You know, we were able to deliver gift cards and food baskets to those folks. We were very fortunate to get funding from the Atlantic Compassion Fund through United Way so that we had the funding to provide grocery gift cards to people around the province. We happened to just phone somebody that day and they said, oh, I never even thought to call you, but my freezer just broke this morning and I'm gonna lose all of this food. Our staff member put a call out on our social media saying, has anyone got a small deep freeze that you know they're not using at the moment? So we actually had one in that woman's home later that day, just a couple hours later. You know, because of your health condition, you might need specific things that you can't get at a food bank. Or maybe your local food bank isn't accessible. Or maybe because of your vulnerable health condition, you don't feel safe waiting in a line outside to access that food. So for us, it was really important to make sure that people were fed. In New Brunswick, there's over 4,000 different programs and services for if you have a disability and that's extremely difficult for anyone to navigate so we are the community workers that help folks navigate this complex system and figure out what supports they are eligible for. Now with full-time care in place, Noor is starting to think about her future. I think moving forward with NOR, we have some some pretty big goals. Um, we want to work on education goals with NOR, so looking into going to university and maybe carrying on with her law degree that she started. So that's like a really big, powerful goal to kind of work on together, which will um, be very nice. And also NOR really wants to start driving, which I think is a great goal for independence. So driving and education and just some stability and getting some more equipment um, in the home to make Nora as independent as possible is really some of our big goals. I like uh, grab leaves, though, so I asked Maggie that I would like to to do them by myself. So Maggie brought me through Amazon, by Amazon, and grab leaves machine. And uh, I tried to do some with my mom. You bought the grab leaves, after that you, you put it with the you put the rice and meat inside them. After that, you roll them. They ability helped me so much, especially Maggie. They play a very good role in my life. And I really appreciate their favor. Especially Maggie. Maggie, she's so active. She works like, very hard for me. She became my friend. When I am sad or Christ, she tells me, talk to me. I talk to her and I feel comfortable when I talk to her. So I don't see psychologists because like I have Maggie, I talk to her. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. In Sackville, a small university town in rural New Brunswick, 19-year-old Nolan Dobbin is a well-known face in the community. 
During coronavirus, the typical day was me in bed just lazing around playing video games. Before the pandemic, you could find Nolan, who lives with Williams Syndrome, hanging out with friends, chatting with students at Mount Allison University, or at his job at a local church. But COVID-19 put a crimp in his typically busy social life. I had surgery in January, so that's why I was bedridden most of the time. My social life was like, was not all that social when, while I was stuck at home. I was missing all my friends. At Ability NB, Haley Flero and her team knew that isolation and feeling alone would be a big challenge during COVID-19. But even Haley was shocked at how many of the usual supports weren't available. So social isolation was amplified during this pandemic. People had less support they could count on. They had to social distance, stay at home. So we started to take a look at some of our existing programs and how we could tweak them. And one of them was our peer support program. We purchased a gaming software where our youth came together and, and played games, um, interactive games online, and were able to connect with each other and relate to each other and share their experiences during COVID and share the experiences of living with a disability. There's there's nothing like talking to someone else that's been there. We we did these like um trivia things for like um the abilities New Brunswick game nights and one of the times we did that I won a prize, a $25 PlayStation gift card. During COVID, after I was done all my all my meetings, I would go on my PlayStation and just chill out, put on my headphones and forget about life. It, it saved my life during quarantine. It saved my life, I tell ya. While Ability NB's younger clients met online, the organization wanted to make sure technology was not a barrier to connection. Our seniors, many of them preferred to have phone events. So we would do these teleconference type events where we would issue bingo games and word games and all of these things and bring together people at a certain time to call in and, and have these connections. So we really listened to what our population wanted. And it's really going to help drive our peer support work going forward uh, to look at new ways to deliver peer support because we hear from our population even more during COVID, there's nothing like talking to someone else that's been there. Like many Ability NB clients, Nolan's therapy was cut short by the pandemic. Our son Nolan had just had major surgery, um, uh, reconstructive surgery on his right foot. And we had had one physio appointment and then the province shut down. And as a parent, I was in fear, like we had gone through so much with Nolan. What were the next steps? We wanted him to to be recuperate uh, to the best of his ability. So we were very concerned as what, what were we going to do now? My name is Michelle Dobbin and I'm Nolan's mom. So when things had shut down, we had no physio, no doctor's appointments. So I kind of took on the role that we need to do something here. We need to keep up his muscle tone. We need to get him moving. I'm a phys ed teacher in the town of Sackville, so I did have some background in, you know, keeping muscle tone, so I knew a few, few exercises to do, as well as I did reach out to a few people and, and get some advice to help help us with him uh, to work at home. And um, we did continue with that. I certainly was not experienced in it, but I did the best of my ability that I could do with the knowledge that I did have and to try and get him uh, moving and to keep up that muscle tone and then to expand how long could he go for because we had no guidelines or set points that at this time after two weeks he should be doing this. I was kind of playing it by ear and, and uh, going by how he felt, you know, with his foot. I really felt like I was out in a rowboat in the ocean with no oars. I was stuck there 
and I didn't know where to go or how to get anywhere. One of the biggest surprises to our organization during COVID-19 was that service providers, primarily government service providers, weren't answering phones. And, you know, when you look at our social net programs in government, that was the most important program to keep moving. In the uncertainty of the pandemic, Ability NB's clients know the organization will be there for them. George Woodworth takes great comfort in that. I feel that a pandemic like COVID-19 really brings to light the true strength of an organization like Ability New Brunswick. They have the ability to bring all the players to the table that need to be, that need to play a part to bring out a successful re resolution to the problem that you're trying to solve. You're not alone. You're, you know, you've got a team and an organization standing behind you that's there to keep you from falling through the cracks. My biggest takeaway was to have pride in our team. You know, contingency planning isn't sexy, but we were able to make a protocol and put it into action and help our service participants through this scary and confusing time. You know, folks like Nora, George, and Nolan were well supported. And that's something that Ability NB does on the regular, but people were so much more willing than ever before to work with us and to look after folks. And that was extremely powerful. Creativity, agility, a quick response, and an open heart. That's what Ability NB brought to the COVID crisis. That is true grit. Executive producers, Steve Foster, Greg Hemmings. Producer director, Elaine Shannon. Writer interviewer, Kate Wallace. Director of photography, editor, Matt Brown. Production assistants, COVID supervisors, Adam Shannon and John Shannon. Sound mix, Paul Steffler. Narrator, Jim Van Horn. Special thanks, Stan Cassidy Center for Rehabilitation. Integrated Described Video Specialist M. Williams. Graphics Andrew Antonello. Regional Content Specialist Ryan Delahanty. Coordinating Producer Jennifer Johnson. Consulting Producer Colette Vosberg. Director Production Kara Nye. Director Programming Brian Perdue. VP Programming and Production John Melville. President and CEO David Arrington. Produced with the participation of Canada Media Fund. Copyright 2020 Accessible Media Inc.